taken by this feeling baby we're invincible Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Notts County. As always, if you're still enjoying the save, drop a like on the video. That'd be tremendous. So, you're thinking, why on earth are you on this page? Well, I'll tell you. Can you show the players ahead of Guerra and Dubois in their national teams? They must be godlike. So I thought I was struggling to sort of think of the best way to do this. So what I could show you is that Dubois currently is considered to be a starting player in the national team. But the fact that he's only got 30 caps suggests that he's not a regular starter always he seems to have fought his way in uh so you can see there's jordy ferrer of man city you've got mbappe of chelsea jowry of liverpool in there too um garin who i believe is also the liverpool keeper there's also this guy Subavi, who is an um a left back plays for inter i nearly signed him in the summer and i'm still wondering if maybe i should have done but it would have cost us an awful lot more money as for brazil it seems that the reason that we don't see as much from Guerra playing for Brazil, you can see for a fact that, you know, Guerra's got how many caps for Brazil? 39 caps and 10 goals for Brazil. I mean, that's still a decent amount of caps, I've got to say. But it's because Brazil don't play, they play with a one-striker system and they've got Manesco, who is the uh, Real Madrid striker, I think, up front for them. Yes. Although he's only just got in the team. Although, pff, he's a player, isn't he? Bloody hell. What a player. Didn't even play for Man City that long, though, did he? That Dick Ashley, if I hear he's never going to give it up, he's never going to let you down, and he'll probably run around. Well, he's disappeared now because he was a grey goalkeeper. Palace to you is what Bournemouth is to Liverpool in real life. It does seem like that. Maybe we should sell them Jordan Ibe while we're at it. New right winger is a massive get. Feel I'm going to be remembering the old Shreddies advert a lot this season. When Unger strikes. I'm a, That's going to be an episode title without a shadow of a doubt. Right, we've got some big stuff today. We've got um Double Lifecom with some stuff in between. And we've also had a couple of games off camera already. So we'll talk about that now because things are getting interesting with my man I touch. He's starting to become a little bit unplayable. And I don't know why he has. But I'm not knocking it whatsoever. Jean Carlos gave us the lead in the 33rd minute against Burnley. I touched the grabs one in the 36th and 44th minute just to add a little bit more insult to Burnley who of course are struggling but a very very strong performance exactly what we needed and then it was a similar story away at Bolton as we trashed them 3-0 you might notice though Ahmed Aitouch scored another brace back-to-back -back braces I think that might be the third time this season already that he scored a brace a nice goal in there for De Los Santos late in the day as well Guerra's sort of struggling again a little bit at the moment and it means that Aitouch is actually the top scorer at the club now Still not in the Premier League as it is. But as things stand, we're only a point off the top of Liverpool now. Uh, we managed to sort of catch up to that as Liverpool dropped a couple... Well, they dropped a point. Chelsea dropped a couple of draws in there that have kind of helped us out. Goal difference has slowly been climbing back up again, which has been very, very nice. Other teams sort of languishing a little bit now. It's a sort of breakaway three at the top, but you know how things can change with that. Man United, they started off so strongly and have really dropped away and finally been pushing themselves back up. City have been a bit inconsistent. Wolves are the ones that are really flying at the moment. Down at the bottom, it's a very similar story. I think Bolton will probably be doomed this season but not quite as doomed as Huddersfield Town, who've already managed to concede 37 goals in 11 matches. I think we might have a new contender for the worst Premier League team ever. But we cannot, we cannot dwell for too long because we've got Champions League goodness tonight. And that's what this is all about. So we're playing Barcelona today. This is the really important one. If we can win this in some way and get ourselves sorted, it can make a huge difference. So, who is available? Annoying, but... It's sort of really all we've got. Is iTouch not quite available? Oh my god, no, he's not. Ah, annoying, but it's the best we're going to have to do. I like having Darren Lever there. He's still a very good player, but we're still missing, you know, Dubois, iTouch, Duranis. It's it's still not fantastic. I think we may struggle somewhat. Not going to start sell so surely. Oh, yeah. Other change I made. I was thinking about this, and I talked about this on stream yesterday. I kind of feel like we had some good games where we focused through the middle in general, but I ended up switching a lot of the time. And I do kind of wonder if it's a bit strange us playing that kind of system when we have wingers in the way that we do. And I feel like there are certain systems that it definitely works well to go through the middle against. 4 2 falls with that giant gap in the center are absolutely brilliant to play against when you go through the middle. But I feel like, generally speaking, it's best to do this because we sort of got a lot better against Burnley when I switched to this. And I started like this against Bolton. And I'm just sort of making little tiny changes to this tactic now to make things a little bit more stable overall. We'll see how we do against Barca today. Um... Because I feel like we've been better clean sheet-wise and just better in general. Uh, particularly against a system like this, if they actually do play like this. Vignato must have signed from Man United. I'd feel more confident if it was that they had Soto or whoever playing as an AM. Because then it would shrink the midfield width a little bit and allow a bit more space. But with the three of them in the midfield, I don't know. Like, I think away at Barcelona, we were a little bit unlucky. They did create the better chances on the night, I would say. But it was still a very, very even game that could have easily... We could have won that on another night. Uh, Lever, nice ball. Unger! What a strike from Unger. Guerra started the season so well. We need to see a bit more of him. Thankfully, oh, there is another brilliant save from the Barcelona goalkeeper. I mean, I'm going to just shorten our passing because my coach says so. Look at this. We've got 72% possession against us. We've created the opportunity so far. Go on, big tackle from Becker. And he's kept the ball as well. 
That is superb football from him. Go on, James. You know you can take him on. Dips out wide of his man. Go on. Oh, oh, that's a penalty. And Miranda might get a red card here. Go on, son. Book him. Oh, come on, ref. The amount of times we get red cards is insane. He's clearly fouled him. Guerra to take the penalty. And it's smashed down the middle. Notts County 1, Barcelona 0. I think we deserve that. Guerra gets into double figures. Hey, it's a pen to give him a bit of confidence back. The chances have been there today. Unger did brilliantly to take Miranda on. I honestly think he should have gone for that. It was a cynical foul on the box. We're going to play a shorter passing style to try and bring a bit of possession back. Just to keep hold of the ball a bit more. Lovely ball for Darren Lever. And he's actually poor first touch, but he's going to cut inside here. Find Jean Carlos! Great save again. Jean Carlos. Nice ball for Beckart. Loads of room for Joran Beckart. Unger smashes it. 2 0. Notts County 2, Barcelona 0. James Unger might only be his fourth goal of the year, but he has still been making all the right noises for me. And really, really pleased with that. Really important goal. 2 0 up in the first half. We are dominating Barcelona. This is what I like to see. L look at the space Beckart has here. But the fact that Unger just takes this shot on first time with his right foot. That is a thunderous effort. We really do seem to be onto something with this approach right now. We've been dominant in this first half. And most importantly, are about to flip the head-to-head. -head. Uh, three and up our Leon as well. 38% possession. We've brought it back a little bit. Second half, hopefully that will continue. It's also important to remember, we're missing some quite key players, particularly eye touch today. And Lever's not exactly in full fitness levels either. We've given them no chances, mostly long shots. And yeah, just them, let them knock about with the ball for no reason. It's good so far, but it could all still change. You know how it goes. Campbell. Dinks one. Lever! And another big chance at the back post. We've got players that are capable of playing those short passes, and I do wonder if that's maybe an approach to go for in the future as well. Rui Ray. Jean Carlos, big tackle. Great save from Suarez. The first time, that's probably the most difficult chance of the night for him to actually make the stop on. Super confident. Third goal would be brilliant, though. Beckart. Lovely ball. We still play the long balls with this approach, though, because we've got the right PPMs. Silva. Unger! And it's three. James Unger scores his second goal of the night, his fifth goal of the year. Definitely the best performance from him in a Notts County shirt. And we are 3-0 up at home to Barcelona. Right. So the reason I like the short passing approach now, I'm thinking, is because a lot of our creative midfielders have got PPMs which allow them to break the rules when they need to. And also, James Unger, that heading ability, that's what we wanted. And he's got it. When Unger strikes, eh, lads? Um... Frankly, not only when Unger strikes, but he has literally been shreddying uh, their left back. And I'm kind of hoping he gets some sent off too, just for the lols. Jean Carlos, Lever. Let's have let's have another go at this, shall we? Out wide for Silva. Go on, back post for Unger. You know you fancy it. And he's in again nearly. Beckart. Ah, oh, he won't be able to get the shot away. And I just kind of want to give Darren Lever a little bit of a rest because he's been a bit worse for wear today. He wasn't really fresh to start the game, really. So I want to see what Rincon can do. Go on, get James Unger's through again. Rincon. James Unger with the strike there. Nice little work linking up already. Rincon is an excellent substitute for both wings as well. And I think that's going to give him a lot more game time this year. Guerra's ball. Sandoval. Rincon will pick it up. 3 0 up is very, very good. Guerra. Gets himself a little bit of room to run. He's through. And Sandoval's header is over the bar. My goodness, this is brilliant. Oh, go on. One last one. We beat them 4 0 with this kind of dominance. And I'll be super ecstatic with that. Campbell picks it up. He's on his wrong foot, but they've not tracked him at all. Greg Campbell, and it's scored. Greg Campbell slips in his first goal of the year with his left foot, I think, on the left-hand side for a right-footed player. It's Notts County 4, Barcelona 0. What an absolute domination, but this is all Greg Campbell. Like, he picks the ball up on the centre of the pitch on his wrong foot. They just completely ignore him, drives all the way through, and slots it under the goalkeeper for 4-0. What a moment that is for him. We are flying in this group now. Beautiful. I really don't have any words. There were some players missing from tonight. And they have stepped up on a monumental level. To get 16 shots on target against Barcelona is utter magic. And it's the kind of thing that could win you a Champions League. That kind of performance in a knockout stage game is what we need. And maybe it was the short pass. I think going down the wings definitely works. But I think the short passing is maybe the missing key to that. Um, 11 goals scored in our Champions League group and only one conceded. We are surely now going to win this group, provided we can just win out from here on. Get 15 points, win the rest of this, these games. It's Leon at home, remember, and Ferenc Varos away. So we've done the hard work, I'd feel like. But right, let's go. We've got some games off camera, and then we're going to come back with another Champions League match, which should be able to qualify us. And you never know what else could happen. Right, we're back. This is annoying. So we went against Newcastle, decided to try out the short passing approach, even against a 4-4-2. We still kept a decent amount of possession at times. It was up in the 60s, and the second half they got a bit more aggressive. Played really well. Created a ton of chances in this match, and I cannot believe that we didn't win this. Jean Carlos gave us the lead in the 30th minute, as uh, I think it was uh, Guerra that was able to set him up for that one. And it was looking good. We had some more chances in the second half. And then I thought we were in the clear, but then Newcastle got a free kick about 35 yards out in the 93rd minute. And wouldn't you know, Ruben Neves was able to smash it in. Keeper just went straight through him. Uh, so that was great. That dropped us some lovely old points at home against Newcastle. I thought that was going to be a really solid win for us to keep us pace at the top. Was not to be. 
Thankfully, though, we did manage to flip things in the next game, not before falling behind in the 60th minute as Christopher Gordon put Watford in front from a corner with their first sort of chance of the game. Gibbs White was very, very solid for them in this game. We just couldn't get near him annoyingly. But thankfully, at that point, I then made the change to get Garrett off because he was having a terrible day. Cue immediately Jean Carlos whipping one in behind. George or Jorge Rincon getting in there, equalising, scoring his first goal for Notts County. Really nice finish. And then, with 10 minutes to go, the ball was whipped to the far post, and there, off the bench, was Ahmed Aitouch to score his 11th goal of the season, making him now the top scorer at the club once again. Eighth in the league. Lovely goal for him. And then we got a lovely sort of own goal from a corner from Finley Burns to give us a full 3-1 victory, keeping us three points behind Liverpool at the top, but starting to build a gap on the teams uh, below us. And we've got West Ham at home next, who are struggling and conceded an awful lot of goals. Weirdly, they got beat 6-0 by Crystal Palace. And then Palace went and sacked their manager. They sacked the guy. I know they're not doing great this year. Yes, Jesse Marsh has got them 7th, 7th and 5th. 5th last year as Crystal Palace manager. And they just sacked him after winning 6-0. And they've replaced him with Andre Vies boas So I don't know what's going on there. And also, Celso was asked to leave. Uh, he wants a new challenge. So he may well move on in January. But it means we'll probably get an awful lot of money for him because he's got a long contract still. I reckon we can get 50, 60 million for the guy, which would be very, very nice indeed. Today, hopefully, is going to be the day that we qualify. Uh, we're at home. Sorry, no, we're not. We're away in Hungary. This one should be a fairly straightforward victory for us. And things could go even better for us if, for example, Liam were to take some points off Barca. Now, I rested a few people out for the Watford game too, which I think is kind of what made the difference. So the bench will be Sandoval Fernandez, Asman Rincon, Pinto, Lever, and De Los Santos. We've got a fresh team out there tonight, which I think was really going to help us out a lot. But Tierso now has eight goals and five assists in 14 appearances for Napoli in all competitions this year. He's now considered five stars, which is outrageous. So I reckon, because we don't really need him because he's a left-sided winger, and that's not really the way we play. He could move on for absolutely moon money, like £50 million in the summer, I would say. This loan spell is going to make us so much money. And Napoli are already paying us a load of money for the deal, too. This should be a straightforward victory for us. I want to see us keep a lot more of the ball than we have been recently. The short passing should allow us to help with that. Um, and just slowly but surely beat them again. I want sort of 3 or 4 nil again, like we've had before. Jean Carlos... But it's also very important to keep an eye on the Leon Barcelona score. Anything but a win for Barcelona puts us in a very, very strong position. And we're obviously going to be in a very strong position to uh, qualify no matter what. And Becker has just been played into trouble. And big tackle. It's somehow he's still got it back. And all the way through. Oh, not a bad effort. I think we kind of underused that there. I touch. Oh, that defender's toast. Slips it inside for Dubois. Guerra. Look at the run from Giancarlos. Oh, smashes it bottom corner. Seventh goal of the year for Giancarlos. That's not dissimilar to the one he scored against um, Watford, as it happens. Or was it? No, not Watford, against Newcastle. Um, great assist, though, from Jose Lassenguerra. Yeah, they just stood off us too much. Allowed us, once we started to speed up the play with these little one-touch still situations, Guerra just turns it inside. Giancarlos, lovely touch. And thunder a strike with a left foot. Seven for the year already. He's on it. That early lead is definitely going to be helpful. Takes the pressure off a little bit. I touch again. Real energy about him. Giancarlos and Unger. And a good save, but Unger's not done yet. I mean, they still don't look good, but they look okay. Jean Carlos. I guess they are the home team, at least. And I touch. Oh, what a finish. 12 goals for the year from Ahmed I touch. This guy is ridiculous. Um, I know we talked about him being brilliant last year, and we were super happy when he got 16 goals, which is, again, uh, four more. It was like a 33% increase on the best ever tally for a player from that left-hand side. But today, look at this. So calm. Just boop, side netting. Bam. Lovely old job. 2-0. 12th goal of the year already. Now, I could put eye touch on penalties just to boost his stats, but I'm not going to do that. I feel like keeping the striker in scoring Nick is always very important. Another goal for Guerra takes his tally for the season up to 11. Now, he's got to stick with him. Those penalties are helping him, at least. Downfield, easily mopped up by Esperson. And it continues. John Carlos, Beckart, Guerra. Oh, one touch everywhere. Unger's got to square this for someone. Can he do it? Oh, nearly another brilliant move there. Nearly resulting in another eye touch goal. Guerra's ball. Jean Carlos has had it and it's now 4 0. Grabs himself yet another goal for the season, his second goal of the night and his eighth of the year as well. I'm trying to think where his best ever season for us. It was probably 11 or 12, and he's already on to eight at this stage in the season. We look, mm, I know it's only French Varus, but there's something here now. Some of the football we're playing actually is quite interesting. Little just one touch, knock down here, knock down there kind of football. Ungo's got to find the cross again, does. Guerra, 5 0. Lovely ball across from James Young. It's just such simple football we're playing now. Getting these nice little triangles going in the attacking thirds of the pitch. Look at this, just. I just really enjoy watching them at the moment. John Carlos does a nice job of just waiting off, rolls it around the side. Unger's first touch just skims around the defender, whips that ball across, and there's Guerra for his 12th goal of the year. That's what I like to see from Jose Lelson Guerra. Yes. Well, half time. And I know I said in the last game against Ferris Farish that that was the most one sided first half I've ever seen, but this is definitely it because we've actually taken the chances. We've had less shots on overall, but way more on target. I'd like six or seven in the end. That would just be a good. Oh, and Esperson normally comes up trumps there. Campbell. 
back post. I oh my goodness. He's just dinked one up to the back post and I touch has just buried it like it's <laughs> He is an undertaker of a man today. He's burying everything. Uh, that is sensational stuff. Beckart just looks up, and it's not like it's a dink either. He's put a decent amount of venom on that, but Itouch is just so strong in the air when he gets to those back posts. 13 goals for the season already. This is about as complete a performance as I've ever seen from us, and nearly another chance for a goal. It's going to be 6 0. Uh, that's very, very good. Creatively great, possession wise, chance creation, everything was basically perfect on the night. Two for Jean Carlos, two for iTouch, two for Guerra, assists for days, and we are. Look at this! Our goal difference is 15 better than Barcelona's, and we have now officially qualified, and we need just a point really at home against Leon in order to guarantee that now, which is going to make that much, much, much easier, just in case we were in for a bit of a rollicking. But we have really stepped it up now. I feel like we're going to just really go from here. It's certainly the first time in a long time that I can remember that I've had three different players for the same team score a brace in the same match. But fair play. When you've got your striker, your attacking midfielder, and your left-sided inside forward all getting a brace, that shows that they're really onto something now. And like with the Newcastle game being a slight blip, there's definitely a stretch in the right direction for us now. We're scoring a lot of goals, even against very, very good sides now. Very, very pleasing. So next up, it's going to be Leon, of course, with Southampton as the other game there with a few little games off camera between West Ham. Should be winnable. Liverpool at home is going to be crazy difficult. And then Wolves away, that won't be easy as well. Leon won't be super easy either. So we've got a lot of stuff still to come, but we want to make sure that we qualify. Like it could still muck up. If Barcelona win their final day, which they will, and we lose at home to Leon on some madness, we will still not win this group. We're through, but we're not done yet. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, drop a like on the video. That'd be tremendous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be awesome as well. I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays over on Twitch, but also this weekend, Saturday and Sunday at 7 p.m., stream a showdown matches against me and loads of other FM streamers. That's going to be fun, so tune in on Twitch for that as well. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Happy bye. Bye-bye.